Okay, let's imagine two types of geometry. It is the case that the ancient Greeks and the ancient Indians and uh, the ancient Egyptians knew that the entire universe was ruled by conjugate principles. You don't want to talk about male principle, female principle, but we don't have to get into that level of esoterica. We're talking about field geometry. Conjugate natures. In other words, one doesn't have definition without the other. Shadow has no definition without light. Um, principle precedes the object of negation. Principle, attribute, light and illumination. Space is force and motion. It always is. Something diverges, it creates space. It goes off, quote-unquote, into space. But space has no properties. Um, Nikola Tesla said this. Um, Aristotle said this. Sir Isaac Newton said this. So that is the case. Well, we can suspend disbelief on that. But we have to understand what a conjugate, conjugate relationship is regarding field geometry. Now, we've been trying to unify electricity, magnetism, dielectricity, and gravity for a long time. But what if there was only one field, and that field defined principle, it defined inertia, it defined energy, and then we had the loss of that defined force and motion, i.e. magnetism. Now let's take a look at a diagram, and then we'll take a look at... Uh, something else in a second. Here we have the conjugate relationship that defines the universe. This is my little diagram. Here you can see basically a donut cut in half, right? We see the donut formation. We have a double donut here, but that's only an expression of field mediation. We have higher intensity here, lesser intensity here on either side. And of course we can see this in spiral galaxies, right? Well, obviously so. So we have a central hyperboloid here and an outer hyperboloid, but ultimately we can eliminate the orange and eliminate the red. And we can just look at the blue, the donut shape, and we can look at the central part here, the shape like an hourglass. That defines counterspace, defines trans-Euclidean geometry, or metageometry. Yeah, simple little shape, right? The hourglass. Now it is the case and has been proven mathematically via a software application that the inverse of a sphere, the absolute max inverse of a sphere, is a hyperboloid. Now, if a sphere defines force and motion, then what defines the inverse of force and motion? Obviously, something comes before force, right? You know, you shoot a gun, you have force and motion exiting the barrel. What exists prior to that? We have rest, we have inertia, we have acceleration. Mother Nature is so simple. It's just that us humans are so incredibly stupid. We don't understand yet the conjugate relationship. Let's take a look at another hyperboloid here. Okay, hourglass shape. And let's take a look at inertia, and let's take a look at force and motion. The hyperboloid. The, excuse me, the torus. So let's combine those two in a conjugate relationship where they exist as one entity. We are talking about the form and the shadow. We're talking about inertia. And we're talking about the loss of inertia, the hyperboloid, the donut. Uh, excuse me, the, the torus, the donut that exists around. Now, I said the inverse of a uh, sphere is the hyperboloid. And it is the case that the inverse of the hyperboloid is the sphere. So why am I talking about a torus instead of a sphere? Very, very simple. Why the donut and why not the sphere, or vice versa? It is because the case, the conjugate relationship that exists between these two must and can only exist like this, simplex field pressure mediation. The torus still is a spheroidal loss of inertia. Now you can see here the curvilinear lines, and if we look down here we can see the vortex. We can see the hypertrochoid, i.e. the spirograph uh, pattern uh, that you can actually see underneath the ferro cell. Well, this is the vortex. This is looking at it top down. Now, to make this completely accurate, we're actually looking at two of these, one running counterclockwise and another one overlapping, but obviously showing a physical model that is rather hard. So you can see the spirograph or the dream catcher pattern right here. Well, of course you can. Okay. So what do we understand? What's the secret of Mother Nature? We have the sphere. We understand, as human beings, as physical entities, you know, phenomena, shapes, triangles, spheres, uh, cubes, pyramids, and whatnot. But 
What defines every bit of geometry in the universe is not shape, is not geometry, but it is counter geometry. It is counter space. It is trans Euclidean. Here we have space. Here we have counter space. Space, counter space. The two are a conjugate relationship, the same conjugate relationship that exists all throughout nature. We can see it on the level of spiral galaxies, we can see it everywhere. So, let's, now that we know the torus, we know the hyperboloid, let's take a look at that using the magnet. Here we're seeing the cross section of the torus, here we're seeing the hyperboloid right here dipping in. If I get too close I'll actually cause a void and you'll notice that the void exists exactly like the shape of an egg exactly like I told you. Pressure EM retardation which is what is called electromagnetic retardation a ratio of 5 to 1 or 1 to 5 depending on how you look at it. Simple. Let's turn on the camera. We're going to point it at the wall turned it on correctly, that is. Okay, here we're seeing a counterclockwise vortex. If I apply, right now I'm using the south pole, you see that the spiral, it's a piece of paper on the wall that's being filmed on the camcorder right here, is turning with it, is turning counterclockwise. But you'll notice that the centripetal portion, if you can peer over my hand, is turning clockwise. So, it's moving with it, counterclockwise is moving counterclockwise, you see that? Now if I flip it over, the counterclockwise is going to move in the inverse direction of the diagram, it's going to move clockwise, you see the movement towards clockwise? See it very slowly, clockwise? Now you notice how the lip of the inner part here that is, uh, that is lost because of the magnetism is swirled inwards, where if I flip it over, that's not the case. Clockwise motion, counterclockwise motion. How simple could it be? An old TV set and a camcorder and a paper drawing taped onto the wall over here. How much more simple could it be than that? Okay, let's take a look again really quickly so we understand what's going on. Okay. Here's the secret of Mother Nature. The hyperboloid and the torus. Here we have the creation of space. Here we have counter space. We have it in a conjugate relationship that can be seen in a magnet because a magnet is denotatively a thing, nothing other than field coherency. You see this? This accretion disk, the central portion right here. If someone wants to call it a black hole, I don't care. If someone wants to say it looks like a spiral galaxy, I don't care. What's the inverse image of the donut? The hole. If you actually take the negative image of the torus or the donut, we have the hyperboloid right here. This is proven from software that the inverse max pressure throw of a sphere is a hyperboloid. And here we have the toroidal hyperboloid, the torus hyperboloid, the conjugate nature of mother, the conjugate field relationship of mother nature. Here we can see it right here. What is a CRT tube? You know, if some idiot wants to say it's electrons hitting a phosphorus screen, I don't really care. However, that's not the case for longitudinal dielectric lines of, uh, of, uh, of uh, force that are actually shot out of the back of the gun, at the back of the CRT tube, that strike the phosphorus, but ultimately, the important thing is that we see the conjugate relationship of Mother Nature in simplicity. The hyperboloid of the centripetal convergence, the centrifugal divergence that forms in 3D, which of course is a two-dimensional projection on a large 27-inch TV, the torus, the torus and the hyperboloid. This is the simplicity of nature. Grand unified field theories aren't necessary. We have dielectricity, 
or inertia and acceleration, and we have force and motion. They exist in a perfect conjugate relationship. Simplex field pressure mediation. One of the wisest statements that anybody that truly understands how Mother Nature works, as so far as field pressure and field geometry, is not a statement of fact or a repetition like a parrot, but the most intelligent and wise thing of someone that has comprehension can be is that it cannot exist any other way. This is the only way that it can exist. A vortex is denotatively not some magical formation. It is no different than pulling the drain on your plug of your bathtub and watching it go down in a vortex. We have the exact same thing occurring at the centripetal point of either side of this magnet, a little drain if you will, and on the centrifugal edge we have a shower jet if you will. So we have a shower jet and a drain on either side of each magnet. Now defining polarity takes a little bit more time, but the true denotation of what polarity is, is the inverse of inertia, the inverse of counter space. Because Mother Nature, in her absolute simplicity, does not how how to draw a line like this as humans start here here go from here to here mother nature only draws a line like this or like this or like this that's the only way mother nature knows how to make a line she doesn't start at a point and go in one vector she starts in a point and goes inverse to counter space inverse to counter space okay inverse we start here, and we're starting at a Cartesian coordinate. That's a human line. Okay, that's us dumb humans. The only way Mother Nature knows how to make a line is this way. This way. That's all Mother Nature knows. Let's take a little smaller magnet. You can see the same thing. So a little three-quarter inch neodymium. Right there. Kind of hard to hold it with my finger. There we go see the hyperboloid, the torus. You're looking at the inside of a donut of magnetic divergence. That's why you see all these many different colors here. And while you see, you can't see it, but this is the actual vortex occurring right here, where right there. This is the only way Mother Nature knows how to work. She only understands two things, two principles, force and motion, inertia and acceleration. One dictates the other and the other dictates the other. She's really simple. She's been screaming to stupid human critters for ages, but only a few understand what the hell she's saying. She's really simple. So it can't even exist any other way. This is the secret of Mother Nature. This is the secret of the universe. If you were to travel to a galaxy far, far away, for example, this universal truism is universally applied at every point and corner and nook and cranny of the entire universe, known and unknown. It is immutable. It is inescapable. It can't exist any other way. No one can escape it. No one can deny it. It is this way and only this way. Everything is governed by capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. Mother Nature is a really, really, really simple girl. And she's not a hooker covered in body glitter with a bag of magic particles, as quantum would have you believe. She's a simple country girl that's illiterate, barefoot, and half-naked, and she only understands two things. Force in motion and inertia and acceleration. With that and that alone, the entire universe is governed. Simplicity is divinity, but simplicity, not simplex. You can't say that a reciprocating processional hyperboloid is simplex. Which is, it is really, really simple. You just have to understand what it is. But it's ultimately no more complex than saying, you know, you pull the tub on your drain and the water goes down the drain in a vortex. It's really no more complicated than that. So anyway, Thanks for looking, and I'm glad that uh, you could get a possible insight into the mechanics that govern the entire universe, because Mother Nature does not have a calculator. She did not take a math class, you know. She doesn't do uh, 
quantum physics. She doesn't do quantum mechanics. She understands things very, very, very simply. It's that us stupid humans have tried to make her out of some complex beast that she's not, so. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. On the flip side, увидимся, as the Russians would say.